Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we're actually going to be covering the ranked one player in KR currently of the recording of this video playing Bianca. We've got Amir with us today. How are you doing today Amir? I'm doing really good. I have, uh, I've been watching a few people play Bianca recently because this character looks a, a lot stronger than I thought. But um, yeah, getting to see the current rank one player play the character, I'm sure they'll pull out some things that I have not seen before. Maybe teach me a few new things about this character. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I love Bianca as a character. Definitely, I'm not the best with her, but she is definitely that character when I'm not sure what I want to play and I just want to have some fun. I always love locking in this character. Something about her play style feels really unique and different compared to a lot of other mages. That just makes it very, very satisfying to be able to play around her. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you just jump in and the fight is instantly won and you're just feeling like you hit literally everything. Won your team of the fight, nothing to worry about. Uh, other times, you you might look at the fight and wonder why I even joined, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that when you're this good at Bianca, every fight feels like I jumped in, used everything, and my team didn't even have to play the video game I played it for them for sure i'm really excited to see how this plays out now for anyone that doesn't know how bianca works let's just go over her kit real lit first off we actually have her passive bloodletting which is her it has two components the first is hemostasis so every few seconds bianca's next basic attack deals bonus damage and the second half is blood bank so under her her mana bar you can actually see it bianca stores a percentage of her damage dealt and damage taken as blood and while out of combat, consumes the blood, healing her every second. Her main, her first main ability Q is Sanguine Javelin. So Bianca throws a spear of blood at a target location, dealing damage to the first enemy or through enemies hit. And then the Javelin forms a pool of blood on a revival, arrival, dealing skill damage to the first enemy that touches it. Enemies with Hemostasis, so the passive, are rooted for one second when hit by Sanguine Javelin. So it's really common to actually see uh, Bianca's through Q and auto attack to root people. The next one is her W, Sanctuary. So while inside the coffin, Bianca actually takes a percentage of reduced damage and heals. And if she has over 50% blood when using Sanctuary, she instantly consumes all of her stored blood, increasing her healing inside the coffin and reducing her skill cooldowns. Yeah, another thing with the, uh, with the Sanctuary actually is that Oh, we're going to see it here. Uh, a bit of things is, if she's in the coffin already, she can be casting either her alt or her E, and it'll hide the animation from the rest of the lobby, as we saw her go into the coffin and then use alt and use E together. But something else is, if her blood is over 50%, the coffin will instantly re refund itself, going to basically no cooldown, meaning that you kind of want to get this bar to 50% or above, then consume all of your blood, get it reset, have this uh, percent damage reduction back up. And uh, the Sanctuary also does not actually reduce the weapon skill every time it ticks to reduce your skill cooldowns, which is something that is slightly unfortunate for Bianca players, but it's uh, maybe to balance the character a bit more. Definitely would have been broken if it did allow that, but going into her third ability, Circulation, this is a wind-up channel ability that sends her into a dash, dealing damage. Uh, the channeling it increases the radius and dash range, and if it's charged for longer than one second, hitting an enemy also heals Bianca. Lastly is her Reign of the Vampire Queen. So she conjures a massive AoE circle around her that is left on the ground after a short wind-up, slowing enemies and dealing damage to them, and healing Bianca for all the damage that is dealt there. Yeah, we see a lot of Biancas use this alt and our E together, as we see right here, so that you can use this alt and E dash in, get this alt down, surprise your opponents, maybe look for the auto and then Q, root them, and it's just a very big combo that doesn't really let your opponents try to, try to respond. Um, we do see here, we use the combo. Sadly, it was not enough team to win the fight, as Bianca isn't really known for her early game damage, um, he is a very well scaling character with pretty good amp ratios and if she can hit this ult on three people in the late game It can just start removing health bars 
So, you know, losing a few of these early game fights is fine as long as we're not instantly losing the game. No, exactly. And I think the other thing that's really interesting about Bianca as well is just the simple fact that one thing that you'll notice when she uses her her ultimate, if she's doing an engage si style of thing, a lot of times you'll notice is Bianca's will go for their, their Q into auto attack to get a root and then follow it up immediately with the ultimate. Actually, we literally, we, we, we did see it there. Uh, not as aggressive as expected, but you, normally you'll you'll see that there where they'll actually land the root and then try to go in for an ultimate engage on top of the target that they set up the CC on. The other big thing, now we probably won't see it with this type of team since we're very dive heavy and we're probably just going to be going onto a back line. But if you're playing with a front to back sort of style, you can also use your ultimate as a very powerful zoning tool to isolate a target and let your back line eliminate whoever you've isolated. Yeah, sometimes you might see their front line walk a bit too far up and then rather than trying to ult and target someone, you just ult between their front line and their back line, making it very scary for their back line to walk up or for their front line to walk back. And then now your back line is kind of just allowed to freely hit whoever's up there. Exactly. Actually, honestly, that has to be probably my favorite playstyle with Bianca is sort of like the pseudo tank Bianca where your part of the initiation and engage of the team and then letting your ADC ideally be able to kind of clean up the fight afterwards. Now, actually, another thing we should talk about specifically about that is because we're not inherently the the front line of this comp, right? We have an Elena, we have an Abigail, both characters that are more than happy to take the initiative if necessary. We're actually running Blink, which is quite common recently with Bianca's allowing you to be able to wind up your ultimate and then blink forward to create even more of a space gap to dive onto backline so a much more aggressive play style yeah I am not sure exactly where people had gotten the idea of taking blink on Bianca um but I know that this is the, actually the player that popularized it as a lot of NA Bianca's we're referring specifically to this player anytime I would ask why Bianca's was started taking bling. Yeah, it's an interesting idea though, right? Because you're able to counter blink with blink, which means now anyone that's running blink to try and get away from your engage is immediately nullified as long as you have your blink up. And you're able to just get onto that backline more. And again, it's we're playing more of that assassin burst mage variant right now instead of the pseudo frontline variant. So we're really looking to get to that backline and one shot some of these weaker carries. Whereas if we were running, for example, totem, which is what was normalized beforehand, you're probably the one that's engaging, you're putting a bunch of pressure and then you're immediately stasising to stall out the fight while your team cleans up. Yeah, and we actually do see, I know Bianca players don't have the best time farming, but this player is cycling through this coffin, allowing them to get the uh, all of the refunds, resets on their abilities, seeing these cooldowns, and then they're able to farm a bit easier than I think a few Biancas have done. Yeah, the Bianca's not the greatest with farming, but even still, it is so satisfying. I don't know. Again, I'm just saying a lot of Biancas will run Thrill of the Hunt to try and help with their farming. And just throwing out an auto Q or Q auto just feels really satisfying to kill a mob, but then you realize that you have no other damage and then you're kind of just having to sit in coffin and wait. Yep, sitting in coffin, watching it attack you, waiting for your E to come up, waiting for your Q to come up, also your passive. Maybe sometimes you just get so frustrated you decide to throw an ult on a mutant bear horde. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> One thing though, actually, I really want to point out that's interesting that some people might notice if you ever watch Bianca players and not sure why they do it is Bianca's E has a set range of a dash. So you'll go a set distance once you've max charged it, which is what you want to do to be able to do the most damage and also heal off of your E. They'll actually aim it up to walls that their E won't go through to guarantee that they land the hit of the AOE damage on the on the mob or target that they're trying to farm without having to risk going too far in a certain direction and putting them in, in an awkward position. Yeah, it's a very nice thing to, as you said, make sure you don't go too far. Uh, just making sure that this E is shorted, um, as I know a few players like to call it. Um, it's a 
small mechanic that I don't know if too many Bianca players use, but if uh, if they do, it kind of starts to show that they really play this character and understand when they want to go far, how far they ever want to go, and it's a it's a thing of uh, of mastery, I think. Yeah, it's definitely like it's it's that moment where you know the character enough, and now you're starting to fine tune the min max, right? You're you're making your farming a little bit more efficient. I I don't usually see it too much in team fight purposes. But there are definitely a couple opportunities that I've noticed where I've seen Bianca players where they'll actually eat into a wall when they're when they're one v wanting someone to guarantee that they get a hit where they don't want to risk dashing too far past them. But rarely, it's mostly for farming optimization. Yeah, and we're actually going to see a TP right here. The Rozzy that had also previously died in this zone. Sadly, we're not going to be able to connect the ult as the Rozzy has a bit too much movement speed with pistol skill and blink and her being Rozzy, <laughs> um, but yeah, we're actually going to get a down, sadly not going to wipe a team because no one else TP'd in, but it was a really good engage, uh, we saw someone come in, just charge that ult up, make sure that once he lands and uh, is actually able to be hit, we can yeah. just slam everything on top of him. Yeah, now I will say, I think the most impressive thing about that play was the will to not press blink. My brain would have immediately screened press blink because they pressed blink get the alt to hit them but in reality we don't have blink three yet so it's still i believe like an 80 second cooldown right now yeah 80 second yeah. cooldown so because of that we, we wouldn't have it up if, if another moment happened so the patience and like the understanding to just not press blink when you when you can is is so important in so many factors yeah i think blink is uh is one of the a bit, or one of the attack skills that people see, I have this ability up, I must press it. And uh, it is what kills people and what saves them sometimes. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm definitely a culprit of that one where I, I saw that blink opportunity and I my brain just said press it. Because like, yeah, it would have it would have landed the alt and, you know, you would have had that value and it would have seemed good. And I mean, sure, in hindsight, we didn't get a fight, so we probably would have had blink back up. But if we did have a fight and we didn't have that blink, you know, it could have definitely been a really bad moment. Especially seeing that a lot of these, uh, a lot of these comps are actually running two backliners and a tank. Like, we want to be able to just dash past this tank, get into that backline. Maybe our Elena isn't able to actually start the fight, or our Abigail can't land a W to really get into the, into the fight with her E reset and we have to be the person to start something, we don't really want to be starting something to their front line, especially with this comp. No, for sure. And I mean, one thing that's also kind of interesting too is right now we don't have, we have Blink 2 still, but I have heard the thought in discussion about potentially going Blink 3 earlier. So potentially even on these three items. Uh, the main reason for this is to allow yourself to have that 40 second cooldown instead of 80, as well as increased movement speed because you actually get that movement speed boost as well after you press the blink. Yeah, and Bianca would abuse this movement speed very well as you just press R, you use the blink, you're running at them at Mach 10, they're not ready for it. So maybe we can even take Strider on this character if we really feel like it. But holding this ult, hiding the animation, blinking into their backline, and now we're just one-shotting their William as he's unable to play the game. We rooted him, we surprised him from out of nowhere. It was, uh, that's the kind of plays you want to be making with Bianca. Yeah, and to actually talk about this a little bit more about the surprising him. So, like I mentioned, a very common tactic that Bianca's will do when playing neutral is look for you their Q into Q2 or auto which then will root the target into their ultimate and dash on top of them and get the kill. However, if you notice there, Bianca used the ultimate, blinked on top of him, and then Q queued him, autoed him to root him in place. Because at that point, Bianca's already instantly on top of you. You have no idea. You're completely just caught off guard. And I remember why. <laughs> we, I, you they, know, just sometimes happened. you're a bit too frustrated, need to get these bears out of the way, and... Oh. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a bit too good. His team wasn't there. I just think that you called it. You were right. Like, <laughs> you're like, you know, sometimes you just alt and, and farm two bears. And guess what? <laughs> we just alt and farm two bears. 
I know because I do it myself as well. Anytime I lock in Bianca, if my team is a bit too far away, and uh, you know, ult's only a 40 second cooldown just about, I might as well use it. Hey, it's, I mean, it's going to be up for this fight in five seconds, so it, wor it works out. It just mind boggles me sometimes because if the team showed up, you'd just be spam pinging, no, my ult's on cooldown, run. <laughs> Hey, my team doesn't need to know why my ult's on cooldown. They weren't looking over. I'm but excited to see this double backline see... again. Yeah, I think we'll see another situation where we're going to get E into blink and ult. Because we're playing off on this side, um, kind of out of the tanks. Oh, we're actually going over the wall looking for a flank. Yeah, we're playing like out of the tank's range. Oh, this we're is going to be a great e engage here. Here's the ult. And, oh, we're actually not going to be able to find the ult onto either of our opponents. But because of it, they're so split up, and oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Our team's do down. Um, I think we just got you know, CC'd a bit too hard against this team comp because the one issue with Bianca is when you are in coffin uh, using your W, you're unable to move, and the smallest amount of CC, um, well, smallest amount of hard CC being things like stuns or knockbacks, knockups, um, these will all deny you the ability to stay in your coffin which means that if you can't dodge them and you get hit by them you're kind of just a sitting squishy mage and it's uh, it's not the safest thing to do no exactly and i mean to be fair i think yeah that that engage was really good in catching out the adina the problem is is that she got flayed into the nathapon ultimate they got triple stasis abigail got full cc'd comboed uh, Bianca was out of gas, so she really needed to have uh, Abigail be the cleanup of the fight. But the enemy team just was completely ready for it. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, uh, there was just a random stray bullet coming over from, I think, an Aya using Q. That was kind of funny as they were just TPing out from the other zone. We're going to get our last upgrade here with the meteorite. Well... Yeah, which is good that basically gets the whole team almost full build. Hey, wait, Abigail's on the new axe item. Uh, yeah, the Abigail build has changed since we got the new axe um, and the new arm piece because she is a very good user of magnetic midnight and any auto attack uh, passive as well. She can use basically every item, every amp item at this point, but we're going to see the root into the ult, making sure that the Kenneth actually just has to run away. And then the, I don't know if Rosie didn't realize that the ult was in the bush, but she ended up walking into it, taking a decent amount of damage. Now we're just able to go onto the double backliners. Carl is falling pretty low. Sadly, our Abigail isn't able to find the kill onto Rosie, but now we have E charged up. We're going to throw it forward. Oh, blink forward as well. I forgot we still have this up. I'm going to try and find the Q, unable to gonna back off now as we see a lion just running over to us we don't know that she's just duo but better to play it safe than sorry no for sure we we're over overextending already but yeah what an incredible play again the patience the understanding of this don't have to press a button unless we absolutely have to kind of moment where i love i love that we're seeing the two versatile styles of how and um how bianca should be playing these fights Versus, like, you know, the, the, the relaxing neutral of a catch into ultimate or the ultimate blink right onto the back line, instant assassinate target. And this player is assessing every single situation case by case, depending on, you know, where their team is. What does the enemy team know that we're here? What's their comp? Are they back line? Are they front line? Who, who can we kill? And it's uh, it's really, really nice to see that, that a full understanding. Yeah, I think what usually separates someone that plays the game in a high rank from someone who is mastered a character in a rank is usually their ability to assess a fight and take it as they want and we're seeing a lot with this bianca where they are seeing exactly what is on the enemy team seeing who they have to focus how they can take the fight knowing that hey it's just a kenneth he's not as tanky as something like an alonzo who can press w and then block 80% of my damage or a lot of other tanks like Mai who can start dodging some damage with the, uh, forget the name exactly, but with my ult. Exclusive, um, yep. Yeah, with the exclusive. Um, so we're just going to throw everything onto him and the only thing he's really got is he can press W, get a bit of damage reduction, but realistically we can just pop him and then pop whoever comes after that. 
Well, exactly, yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm excited to see how these final plays end up going because it looks like it's gonna be a rematch against the team that beat them before. Yeah, I don't think that the Nathapon team is randomly going to die to uh, a bear or something. So we're going to see a rematch back in Forest. And I assume we're going to take it a bit slower, maybe find a different angle onto them, um, and really make sure that when we go in, we find this kill, as last time we weren't able to, and the Adina could ju just start throwing moons across from over the wall, stunning us, getting us out of Coffin, and it became a very hard time to fight. Yeah, I don't inherently think that the Bianca's play was the wrong play the last time that we watched it. I mean, she definitely made, in my opinion, the right decision to be able to go to get that flank, went onto the back line. I think it was just unfortunate that they all ended up being grouped up and got full comboed by Nathapon, which just isolated out the Abigail. And we already see it here. Yeah, like, again, this Bianca, even though they lost the last fight from this, they are not scared. They are confident that, you know what, a flank against this comp is the play, and we can we can see it here. Knowing that it's not the play that was wrong, the execution was, and we're actually going all the way around to try and find an even bigger flank, but we noticed that our team is pushing them right into us, has E up, has blink up, going forward, <laughs> right onto the Nathapon, and removing him. That is... It's... A it's just not playable for the enemy team now. We're gonna find another E just hitting whoever is in front of us and the fight should be won, but Adina is actually doing a lot of damage over to our team. Elena's on the floor and we have to try and find something to make sure our team can heal up a bit. Uh, just using our E in Coffin, the Adina doesn't know as we're hiding it because we're in W and just, um, I don't know if Elena was stunned or frozen, maybe, <laughs> but she was not moving and not doing anything. And we're seeing Elena just dash through the rest of the game. <laughs> what was that? The Elena just went through everything. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a great ending. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video here and we'll see you in the next one.